FHWA Authorization Process for Emergency Relief Reimbursement. This is one of the last few videos in Emergency Management's Emergency Relief Programmatic Agreement Series. These videos teach you what to do to apply for and become authorized for federal reimbursement of funds used to repair or restore right-of-ways after disasters. This video continues your learning journey around disaster fund reimbursement to the second required process, authorization. Introduction. This video introduces you to the process for getting authorization for disaster recovery projects after events. The video introduces the process your organization must complete for its roadway disaster recovery projects to receive reimbursement funds from FHWA. Completion of this authorization process is required before FHWA considers the project eligible for reimbursement. Let's review what the DDIR does for this authorization process. DDIR Recap During the very first video of the series, we reviewed the process to follow to apply for emergency relief reimbursement. This procedure applies only to FHWA reimbursement funds. The overview mentioned that a detailed damage inspection report form was required to officially document the event for FHWA and act as your organization's application for emergency relief fund reimbursement from FHWA. A later video taught you how to complete the DDIR form. Remember, your organization's DDIR form must be completed and submitted within 12 weeks of the event to MnDOT's Emergency Management Office. Without this, your organization's expenditures will not be considered for reimbursement. The DDIR also contains the project's NEPA documentation. Emergency management collects all DDIRs for the same disaster. They review them for completeness as well as adherence to FHWA requirements and then submit them to FHWA. Only after FHWA reviews and approves your organization's DDIR can the authorization process begin. Remember, an approved DDIR is not federal authorization. DDIRs prove that a damaged site exists and is your organization's application for federal reimbursements. Authorization means that funds are actually dedicated to the damaged site. This video outlines the additional steps needed to receive federal authorization and, ultimately, reimbursement from FHWA funds. FHWA ER Authorization Requirements Keep these in mind as you pursue reimbursement authorization for your roadways after disaster project. Remember, the functional classification of road for this type of project must be a major collector or above. If the work was done prior to authorization, then the districts must upload their DDIRs into CHIMES. The majority of emergency restoration work is done before being formally authorized. For emergency restoration, construction engineering, CE, can all be authorized with the actual work. Emergency restoration work must be completed within 180 days of the event to be reimbursed 100%. Otherwise, emergency relief funds are only reimbursed at 80% if the project completes the authorization process within two years. Your organization must complete the authorization process within two years from the event date in order for emergency funds to be reimbursed at all. Permanent repair not done concurrently with emergency restoration cannot begin until the project has actual federal authorization. Districts must request two state project numbers, SPs, one for emergency and one for permanent. Request them from your PUMA coordinator. Each district has one and every district project is required to have a state project number. For permanent repairs done concurrently with emergency restoration, PRCER, the NEPA work, Section 106, Section 7, and any Army Corps of Engineers approval must be completed just like a normal project. This is required for permanent repair projects only too. However, the full NEPA document must be completed and submitted prior to authorization. If permanent repairs are done with local forces or a negotiated maintenance contract, the emergency restoration authorization process should be followed. Negotiated maintenance contracts require an inspection report. Now that you're familiar with the authorization process requirements, let's review three FHWA authorization sub-processes. Emergency restoration, permanent repair performed concurrently with emergency restoration, and permanent repair alone. 
Authorization process, emergency restoration. There are three sub-processes within the FHWA authorization process. They all begin and end similarly, but the middle steps are different. Let's explore the emergency restoration authorization process first. One, FHWA approves your organization's DDIR and sends it back to MnDOT's Emergency Management Office. Two, Emergency Management uploads the approved DDIRs into eDocs and notifies the district that the approved DDIR is available electronically. Three, the district chimes coordinator retrieves the electronic document and enters needed specific information into chimes. Four, the chimes coordinator requests a federal project number from the MnDOT Office of Financial Management's Project Authorization Unit, or PAU. Five, at some point, the project manager has determined whether it's a trunk highway MnDOT project. For our purposes, we'll say it's a trunk highway project. Six, for disaster events, nearly all require some emergency restoration to allow essential traffic through. For emergency restoration, many times authorization isn't obtained until after the work has already been done because it must be done immediately. Seven, the district chimes coordinator emails the MnDOT Office of Financial Management's Project Authorization Unit, or PAU, telling them the project is ready to be authorized. Eight, PAU then completes the federal aid authorization form and submits the project in FEMIS for FHWA authorization. Nine, FHWA approves the form and authorizes the project for reimbursement of emergency restoration funds. Ten, PAU puts together the authorization message, attaches the approved federal aid authorization form, and emails it to the district chimes coordinator. 11. The district chimes coordinator informs the project manager that the emergency restoration project has been authorized for reimbursement. Next, we'll review the PRCER process. Authorization process, permanent repair concurrent with emergency restoration. Here's how the permanent repair concurrent with emergency restoration authorization process works. You're already familiar with the steps one through three. Let's continue with four. The chimes coordinator requests a federal project number from the MnDOT Office of Financial Management's PAU. Anytime permanent repairs are done, the district must complete the full environmental clearance. Five, at some point, the project manager has determined if it's a trunk highway MnDOT project. For the purposes of this process, we'll say it's a trunk highway project with both emergency restoration and permanent repair. Six, for disaster events, most require some permanent repair to restore the roadway to normal traffic. Permanent repair work should be approached similarly to a standard roadway project. Seven, someone at the MnDOT district office completes the appropriate project plans, emailing their project submittal to the MnDOT project delivery office. Eight, project delivery reviews the plans completes the federal aid authorization form, and submits it all to PAU. Nine, PAU reviews the federal aid authorization form, then submits it into FEMIS for FHWA authorization. 10, FHWA approves and authorizes the project for emergency relief reimbursement. 11, PAU puts together the authorization message, attaches the approved federal aid authorization form, and emails it to project delivery. 12. Project delivery informs the project manager that the project has been authorized for emergency relief reimbursement. Last, let's walk through the FHWA's permanent repair authorization process. Authorization process, permanent repair. Here's how the permanent repair authorization process works. You're already familiar with the steps one through three. Let's continue with Four, the CHIMES coordinator requests a federal project number from the MnDOT Office of Financial Management's PAU. Five, the district completes the full environmental clearance required prior to beginning any permanent repairs. Six, at some point, the project manager has determined if it's a trunk highway MnDOT project. For the purposes of this process, we'll say it's a trunk highway project. Seven, for disaster events, most require some permanent repair to restore the roadway to normal traffic. Permanent repair work should be approached similarly to a standard roadway project. Eight, someone at the MnDOT district office completes the appropriate project plans, 
emailing their project submittal to the MnDOT Project Delivery Office. 9. Project Delivery reviews the plans, completes the Federal Aid Authorization Form, and submits it all to PAU. 10. PAU reviews the Federal Aid Authorization Form, then submits it into FEMIS for FHWA authorization. 11. FHWA approves and authorizes the project for emergency relief reimbursement. 12. PAU puts together the authorization message, attaches the approved federal aid authorization form, and emails it to Project Delivery. 13. Project Delivery informs the project manager that the project has been authorized for emergency relief reimbursement. That completes the three processes your organization must follow to receive reimbursement funds from FHWA. Summary. This video introduced you to the process for getting authorization for disaster recovery projects after events. This video relayed the authorization process your organization must complete for its roadway disaster recovery projects to receive reimbursement funds. Completion of this authorization process is required before FHWA considers the project eligible for reimbursement. This video is complete. Thank you for watching.